there and welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and I'm a TKGA certified master hand knitter and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to apply zippers to your knitting. I'm going to show how to put a zipper in using the hand sewn in method and how to put a zipper in using the machine sewing method. You can place your fabric so your zipper is visible or not. It's personal preference up to you. I'm also going to show how to add ribbon to the back of your work to cover up the zipper if you like. I like that little extra added touch. Before we get started I have one thing I'd like to say and that is before you put in your zipper you need to make sure that you block the fabric. And once it's blocked, you need to allow it to rest for a few days. Because if you accidentally stretch the fabric while it's blocking, while it's resting, yes, it will come back to the size that it wants to be. And if you measure for your zipper and apply it while the fabric is stretched, once it comes back to its normal state, your zipper will pucker and the front of your fabric will look like this and it won't be so pretty. So these are, this one's put in by machine, this one's put in by hand, they both are absolutely perfect. I usually use machine if the edging is applicable to it, for an, in this instance I have a knit to purl to uh, welts going on here and so I can seam in the ditch with the sewing machine and so it's invisible. Over here you can't really seam in the ditch and if I use the sewing machine it would make an indent all along both edges. So on this piece I sewed by hand and I used the bars between the stitches to stitch over to apply it to the zipper. So I'll show how to do the hand sewing one first and the machine sewing second, so stay tuned. Coming up next. Here are the supplies that you will need. Uh, I have a sample of a cardigan front that I'm going to use for machine sewing the zipper in here. Another sample for hand sewing. I have my zippers. I have some um, decorative ribbon for covering up the back of the zipper, which is optional. I also have some double sticky tape used for putting for quilting or putting zippers in. This stuff is wonderful. I have a sharp sewing needle, some sewing thread, and my scissors. So I'm going to start out with the uh, hand sewn zipper first. I'm going to start by applying the double sticky tape to the uh, zipper and you can see this has the sticky portion right there and then a paper covering for it and I'm just going to pull off enough for one side of the zipper and I'm just going to place it along here. This is instead of basting your zipper in. I love this. The thing you have to really watch out for in applying a zipper to your knitting is that the knitted fabric has stretch and the zipper does not. So you can really get out of whack if you don't baste your zipper down or do something like this where I'm using the double sticky tape. So I've got my double sticky tape onto my zipper and I'm going to peel off one side of the paper and leave the sticky on the zipper. Now I'm going to peel off the other side Okay, so you can see, can you see the tape on there? And it won't interfere with your knitting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place the zipper in our knitting. Of course your sweater, French, or whatever you're putting the zipper in should be blocked first. And after it's been blocked you need to allow it to rest for a considerable period of time, I would say days. Because if you accidentally stretched the fabric while it was blocked when you first take the pins out it will stay stretched and if you put a zipper in on stretched fabric the fabric will eventually come back to the size it wants to be and your zipper will pucker it won't look good also this is when you would measure it after it's been blocked and been resting then you measure the length 
Okay, so we're going to just put our fabric up to the zipper. Now, you have two choices here. You can have the zipper teeth show or not show. Personally, I prefer them to not show, but it is personal preference, so you can do it however you want. I'm going to place my fabric on here so that the zipper teeth won't show. So I want to run my fabric up right up the middle of the fabric, right up the center of the zipper. And I want it to cover the zipper head. So now it's it's stuck down. The zipper is attached. And the tape holds really good. It'll stay there until you're finished sewing this on. Then I'm going to put the other half. And I'm very, very careful to line up any design elements across the zipper. That looks good, right? Or you could have, whoops, I don't think so. Look, I'm off here. I'm good here. Let's take that off and realign it. This is why I love the tape. Because if I had basted it like that, I'd have to take out my basting. That looks better. Yay! Now we can try unzipping the zipper. Everything works. It's going to look good. Now we're going to hand baste it in. So I'm going to turn the fabric Actually, I'm going to put on one side first, and we're going to sew this side on. We're going to sew it on. This is not the basting. This is actually sewing it on. So I'm going to turn it over to see the back. I have my needle and my thread, and I'm going to start on the inside of my zipper here and go to the wrong side so I have my knot in the zipper, on the inside of the zipper, and then I'm going to come back through here. Then I'm going to carefully choose where I want to bring my yarn through. And I'm going to come between these two stitches. Let's make this bigger. Actually, I'm going to take this. because I do not want to sew over my stitches. Then I'm going to go over the bar that's between the two stitches back to, so I'm going from here to here over the bar. Here's the bar between the two stitches. I'm going to go over that bar. Kind of like a mattress stitch. Then I'm going to come up, I'm going to come up in this next one right here I'm always looking at the knit side of my fabric. I don't care what the zipper side looks like. And I'm going to go over this bar right here. And you can't see the seaming. And I think I'll come up here on this side. So I'm going to go back and forth. You can do it however you want because I'm going to cover up the back side of my zipper and I'm going to go over this bar here that's between the stitches. Then I'm going to come up here and go over this bar between the stitches. There's the bar. I'm going to go over the bar to the back side. So I'm trying to keep my stitches between the knitted stitches. I'm trying to keep my zipper stitches between the knitted stitches. So I'm going to come up here. And go down here. Can you see this okay? And I'm going to come up here. See, I'm coming up in the V of the stitch. I don't want to come through my yarn. And then I'm going over, see the bar right there? I'm going over the bar to the back side. 
and I'm staggering. So one time I go top to bottom, then the next I'm going to go bottom up. So I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go over this bar. And then I'm going to come up here. And go over this bar. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to continue seaming up this side. Then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Then we'll do the other side. I'll be back in a few minutes. I have now reached the top and I'm going to turn this over and reinforce the top a little bit just a couple of times. I'm going through stitches just that will show on the back of the work, nothing that will show on the front and just reinforcing a couple of times keep the top of the zipper. You can do this at the bottom too. And then I'm going to tie off. And I'll pull my thread down to the other side so I don't have a loose end. So that's one side of the zipper. I'm going, let's take a look at it. It's not interfering with the teeth. Works good. It's on there very securely. This will not come off. And you can see my stitches on the back side. And I'm going to cover those up with the ribbon. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to stitch by hand my ribbon onto the edge of my zipper on both sides. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to baste it down. Let me put some new thread on my needle. Actually this is not basting, I'm tacking it down. And if you want you can use your um, double sticky tape again. This works really really good. I love it. So I'm going to put some double sticky tape on the back of my ribbon here. Also something you can do to the top and bottom of the ribbon before you cut it is apply a little bit of instant glue to each end then cut it to the length that you want. You know, have your ribbon be a little bit longer, apply the instant glue, let it dry, trim it, that keeps it from fraying, measure it, allow a little bit extra, apply the inst instant glue, allow it to dry and trim it, and that'll keep that in from fraying. So now we have our double sticky tape on here. We're going to peel the paper off, and we're going to apply this to the back side of the zipper. I just think this adds the finishing touch and I just love it when you open up the zipper and you have this surprise underneath. It is so cool. So now I'm just going to base this down. I keep saying baste, I mean tack it down. It's going it's not ba it's not temporary sewing, it's permanent. I'm starting on the back side so my knot's hidden. And I'm just going to sew it to the edge of the zipper. Just going to use a little tacking stitch. Let me enlarge this so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just sewing the, the ribbon to the underside. Now of course you could use white ribbon. You could use whatever you want. It's your personal preference. I just thought this would be super cute. Can you imagine this on the front of a little girl's sweater? She'd always want to look at the inside of the zipper and be so cute. And there's lots of cute ribbons that you can get, as well as plain. So I'm just going to sew this up one side and down the other, and I'll be back in a second and show you what it looks like. 
So here we have it. Both sides are sewn in. I covered the one with a ribbon, one without. Let's look at it up close. You can see the ribbon, how I tacked it down. This is the uh, non-ribbon side. Let's look at the other side. Looks good. Zipper works. Excellent. So now stay tuned. Next up, I'm going to show the same thing, only how to put a zipper in with a sewing machine. So that'll be up next. Okay, so we're going to prepare this zipper in the same way that we did the hand-sewn zipper and get it ready to work it on the sewing machine. So I'm going to apply my double-sided tape again. And it doesn't have to be exact because it's acting like a basting thread if you were going to uh, baste the zipper in before sewing it on the machine. So I'm just using this instead of basting thread. And again, I have to reiterate, it's super important that you have to block the pieces first and then you allow them to rest for several days. I can't tell you that enough. I've seen so many zippers that the blocking, you accidentally stretch the fabric, you put the zipper in for that length, then the fabric shrinks back to where it wants to be, and then the zipper will buckle, and you'll get this uh, very unpleasant looking zipper. So, we've got it, uh, the tape on, and I'm going to take the paper part off. There's always a little trick to that, getting it started. And I'm going to place my fabric on here where I want it. Now, you'll notice that I chose two different types of fabrics for these two zippers that I'm installing. This one lends itself better to on using a sewing machine because we can sew in the ditch, in the gullies here. Whereas on this zipper, we sewed between the stitches by hand. We put the sewing thread in between the stitches so that you cannot see them on the right side of the fabric. On this one, we can't do that with the sewing machine, but we can put the stitches in between the rows. So if you're using some design on the front of your fabric that has uh, these channels in them, you can use those for putting the stitches. So we're just going to line the fabric up the same way we did the other one, up the center of the zipper. And press it down so it sticks. Line this one up. Also, and see if we like it. Looks good. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew this on. Okay. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine and I have my swatch. I've got it basted in with the double sticky tape. I have my white thread in my sewing machine and my zipper foot ready to go. This is a super old machine. It's an Elna. I probably bought it in 1972. It has thousands and thousands of miles on it and I love it. My favorite sewing machine. But it has wear and tear on it. So we're going to put this in the fabric just like you would if you were sewing a zipper into a pair of pants or a skirt on regular fabric. I'm going to start by unzipping it. So that the head of the zipper is not in the way. I'm going to place my fabric under the uh, presser foot and let it down. And I'm going to be sewing just on this edge 
right in here. I'm going to pull this fabric out like this. I'm going to sew right in here, kind of in the ditch. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to back stitch a little bit. You can hear my sewing machine. It's not silent, but it's good. And here we go. We're just going to sew right along in the ditch. Till we get to the bottom. Now we're going to move the zipper head back up to the top so it's not in the way down here. And so all the way down to the bottom. And back stitch. Then we'll cut our thread and do the same thing on the other side. Let's see what it looks like. That's pretty invisible. Let's do it on the other side. We're going to just move the zipper foot over, take the zipper down, put this under, and whoops, sorry, bump my camera. And sew down the other side. Just between those knits and pearls. Using the seaming in the ditch, sewing in the ditch type of technique. Now I'm going to move the um, zipper head back up. out of the way. Here we go. Now, isn't this easy? I love it. So much easier than putting it in by hand. Let's take a look now. Take this out. Cut it. That looks awesome. Let's take away the sewing machine and take a closer look at it. I'll be right back. Here we have the completed machine sewn zipper. Isn't it lovely? Perfect. Works great. And if we wanted to, we could also add the ribbon to the back of this. I just think it adds a little extra. So here are both of the swatches completed. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you with your zippers in your projects. If you like my YouTube videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like notifications of future videos that I put out. And please share my videos with your friends. If you'd like to share my videos in your written patterns that you publish, that's fine with me. Just go ahead and do it. Give me credit. And I also have groups that you can follow me in. I have a group on Facebook called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan, a group on Ravelry called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. Feel free to join those groups. So be sure, thumbs up and happy knitting. See you next time.